Welcome back, dear viewers. You're still watching Nile Cruise on Nile TV, and in this very special segment, we have a very special topic that we're going to be discussing. Dear viewers, small and medium sized enterprises, SME, may be the best solution for our economic state or status. Uh, SMEs have the ability to provide a large number of jobs to subdue unemployment to produce imported products and in this context we viewers we have with us an honor to have with us our host Karim Gamel, management consultant to tell us more about of course this very important issue that we decided to discuss today on Nike. Yeah, very good day, Karim, and it's a pleasure to have you with us in today's episode. Thank you, Arana. Our pleasure is all mine. I'm humbled to be here. Uh, I'm happy to discuss it this. It is our pleasure, topic. and you shouldn't be humble because you're going to be giving us information, and your information is going to be adding to us. Thank you very much. Uh, Karim, uh, do you believe that SMEs uh, are the uh, key for a better? Uh, of course. Aside from me believing, let's look at the numbers. Uh, the World Bank, uh, the World Bank stated that. 90% or more of the companies worldwide are SMEs, generating more than 50% of jobs across the world, an estimation to reach around 600 million vacancies by 2030. So this is how big SMEs globally and the economic scale. So uh, another number also to consider that SMEs, the formal, without considering the informal, are generating around 40% of the GDP or the national income in emerging markets. So if you added the informal SMEs, this number will be even more magnified. So of course, this, the, this is very important for any economy to focus on SMEs. From your point of view, what are the projects that can move the economy forward and help it grow? See, this is, this is a very good question. Um, the way I see it, if, if you're coming up with a project that will generate an optimization for a process, or reduce cost in a process, this is a project that would be considered. If you come up with a project that solves a problem, this is also a project that would be successful. Uh, you, you can see many examples for problems that are occurring or newly generated after COVID or others. Uh, so if you come up with a project that will solve this problem, this is definitely will, will, will be considered. Also, anything to do with digitization, uh, like FinTech, for example, uh, 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 augmented reality, virtual reality, so all this uh, tech uh, ending projects like there, there is agri-tech, edutech, uh, fintech, so all these projects are also part of the future and uh, lastly the, the projects that are generating more convenience helping uh, people to have a better experience overall in their day-to-day -day life. Okay, um, fighting COVID-19 will be of course a long process in your opinion, what are the scenarios businesses and society must plan to survive the crisis and emerge stronger? Of course, Egypt is doing a wonderful job. We can yes. never deny yes, it. We can deny all over the world. But uh, we need an ambition to obviously. See, as you said, uh, so COVID-19 and what we live in is the new norm. So uh, we have to adapt, first of all, understand exactly the size of the challenge, uh, try to uh, deal with the new norm so digital payment is one thing so you, you can see even the percentage of online payment versus cash is now increasing uh, you can see like new new uh, services like cloud kitchen to support uh, or to remove any barrier to entry for new industries like someone who wants to open a new restaurant uh, you would see things that are helping uh, to generate more velocity and improve the the overall experience even uh, in, in logistics, for example, so there are companies that are helping with fuel to, uh, to increase uh, the efficiency of the fuel consumption. Same goes for uh, even used cars and how to sell them. There is a new company that just generated a big uh, amount of pre-seed funding uh, for, for used cars. So there is a lot of industries that are coming. And I think this is one of the things that we need to consider when it comes to the new norm. The other thing is to understand the hybrid model of, uh, of work. So working from home became a reality. Uh, we, we all understood it. So companies need to understand this very clearly and to understand how to deal with it without impacting uh, their em employer uh, image and at the same time to, to maintain the same quality they used to provide while they're working in the office. Okay, uh, what, are the, your, um, uh, what are the challenges or the main challenges that face the SME? So w when it comes to SMEs, I think 
one of the biggest challenges they have is access to finance. When you look at uh, the, the developing countries, for example, so uh, we're talking about if, if you added the, the micro to SMEs, so micro uh, enterprises along with SMEs, small medium enterprises, so around 40% of those uh, companies are struggling to, to raise funds or to access the finance. They cannot uh, have money to help them outgrow. We're talking about uh, a shortage of around $5.2 billion, and that was in 2021. So th such numbers show the, the challenge that so such companies have. While we have established the amount of companies that are uh, considered as SMEs formally and informally. So access to finance is one of the biggest challenges uh, that SMEs have. The second one is for uh, like the new generation or, or, or new entrepreneurs that are uh, aiming to start new companies is to find the right partner or the right co-founder. This is also a challenge. Uh, and I think understanding the, the persona and the personal traits that are helping them to find the right partner is one of the other challenges that are, they're suffering from. Or from. Okay, what are, the what, what are your suggestions and ideas to improve the SME investment climate in Egypt? Yes, the, 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 the amazing question. So th there are many things and I think it starts with, with the SME's uh, owners and co-founders. So first of all, uh, this is the time that we need to look at the unit economics, uh, worry about the burn rate. So a lot of new companies, they think that the, the best approach is to burn a lot of money like with promos and offers, but I think considering the unit economics, making sure that they're running a, a lean operation, light operation with no, uh, an, as, as much as possible asset free, this helps them out to showcase that they have a good traction uh, and the cost of scale is, is, is beneficial and attractive for investors. So when the investors see that you're solving a problem, uh, you have, you have a, a very good use case traction. There is a good need uh, for you in the market. Uh, you know your customers well and you solve a problem with a, a low cost of scale. So I think this will help investors to, to, to invest in you. They will be attracted. They will be looking for you. Okay, how uh, for marketing can boost SMEs? Marketing, of course. That, so, 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 let's talk about marketing. So, when 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 we think about SMEs and how they want to uh, to enter the market. So, the first thing is understanding exactly who's your target audience. What wh what exactly uh, your product market fit? Who's the target audience you want to what to speak? What are the different products? So, for, for example, if I'm running, um, let's say, uh, multi... Small. Yes. Medium, you want to say medium? Yeah, let's, medium, let's, let's medium, talk about medium, me. Medium, it came to, it came yeah, yeah, yeah. To so, to. if I have a product and I want to sell it, I need to, I need to target the right, mar the, the right audience for me. Uh, if, if, if that's not my customer and I spent a lot of money to, uh, let's say, to put billboards or to do digital marketing and spend a lot on media buying, and I'm not targeting the right customer for me. So at the end of the day, this is a wasted money. So knowing your customer and, and doing a product market fit study and understanding exactly who, who is the, the target audience for you will help you out to, uh, to address them very well, either to choose the right channel and also the, the time to market is very important. You might have the best idea in the world, but it's not the right time for it uh, to be released. The, the market is not ready for it. The, there is no market awareness, people are not understanding, and there are many examples in, like from global leaders that they launched a, prog a product while the market wasn't ready for it. And then when they relaunched it like some years after, it, uh, it made a massive success. So time to market and the go-to market strategy, knowing your customer, uh, all of these things are helping. And once you have this in place, then marketing would definitely help people to know that you exist. Because if you have the, this solution for a problem that I suffer from, I need to know that you exist so I can use your product or service. Okay, um, how do you evaluate the government's efforts to boost SMEs? Oh, th that's amazing. Like it's, uh, w w what, I, what I can see like day after day, I think amazing effort is, is well put from the infrastructure and, and even ease, ease of access to, to my office. Uh, infrastructure even in the connectivity and lately uh, even for me to start a company I can start it with uh, a virtual office which was an amazing uh, step so there was this uh, statement released like some days ago 
about like how easy to initiate or to register a company now. So a lot of barriers are now removed. And also, uh, when, when it comes to digital, so IPN or instant payment network is one of the amazing solutions that are helping individuals and companies to pay instantly and transfer money in a blink of an eye. So I think great effort is put there and it shows uh, like steps clear steps for for attraction inshallah for uh, like uh, foreign investments to come and and put here in, in Egypt so you're optimistic the foreign I'm, investors are going to be I'm, I'm to hopeful Egypt. and optimistic yes uh, Arab or international or both see I'll, I'll 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 be biased for Arab and and when I when I look for Arab so there are six companies that started as startups and they made it to unicorn or a billion dollar worth of companies so this is this is very uh, very exciting and very motivating for all uh, the entrepreneurs or inshallah future leaders uh, to start their own success story and become the next unicorn business like okay uh, how do you evaluate the uh, yeah we did say this uh, one of the main uh, uh, questions that I wanted to ask you is uh, from your own perspective, uh, how do you see the obstacles? Do you see any of the obstacles that face you? What are the obstacles? Because you mentioned, the, of course, the pros. Uh, I wanted to know the obstacles and I wanted to know your future plans as a, um, one of uh, the main people that work on these very important projects sure. here in Ireland. Sure. So, uh, thank you very much. Uh, as I'll start with the future plans. So. Uh, Alhamdulillah, I was privileged to, uh, to recently join one of the leading uh, like, uh, logistics companies as their uh, general manager here in Egypt. Wonderful. So How old are you? I'm 38. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, and I also have my two baby startups that I have uh, started. And uh, yeah, they're, 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 they're taking some like, good steps towards uh, success. Uh, so I think that's my future plan is to focus on growing those startups and to make a success story with my new uh, with my new job as a as this as a country manager. So uh, this is uh, one future plan is also to become uh, to create a legacy and leave a legacy uh, and success story for people to either learn from or for my my children to to become proud of me in the future. As for the obstacles or challenges, is a little bit of the ambiguity. Like I, I don't know what tomorrow brings. Like I'm, I'm, I'm surely hopeful and optimistic, but still there is a lot of ambiguity on what tomorrow brings, and that's why we have to be like super ready, uh, and uh, and super attentive, so we can uh, pivot and and, be, and and become ready to pivot if this uh, like business model needs to be changed. So we need to understand that yes, we are going to change it with very cautious steps so we can adapt to the to the changes in the future. Kareem Gamal, of course, uh, management consultant. It was a pleasure to have you with us pleasure today's is all episode Thank of Matthews. Of course, uh, we discussed and of course the uh, very uh, controversial issue, uh, which is uh, small and medium-sized enterprises um, and the best solution for economic uh, status, of course, here in Egypt. Thank you. And of course, uh, thank you so much for your informative knowledge. Pleasure. Thank you so much thank for you. joining us in Mad Cruz. It was of utmost pleasure to have you with us. Uh, and uh, hopefully we have you again Inshallah. to know more about the ongoings and to learn more about the ongoings thank in you, this Rana. career. Thank you for having me today and uh, all the best. Thank, thank you so much. Dear viewers, this is the segment of Mad Cruz. Stay with us. We still have more for you. Don't go away.